How much technical knowledge you take on board is entirely up to you. The thing is, cameramen are not button pushers. You don't need to tell them how to make every shot. They just want to know how you want something to look, how you want it to feel. However, it is a good idea to have a basic understanding of lenses so that you can begin to think about using them creatively. More importantly, you can make sure that you don't ask for something that is logistically impossible. Most cameras have a standard zoom lens, which means you can have a wide angle shot or a zoomed in telephoto shot and everything in between. If you shoot with a wide angle lens, objects look smaller, you can get more in shot, it tends to be steadier, action looks more dramatic, you get more background, things look further apart than they really are and you can make a small room look bigger. With a narrow angle lens, Objects look larger, you get less in shot, camera movement is more noticeable, it's good for pulling focus, movement towards or away from the camera appears slower. The camera here is filming with a telephoto or narrow angle lens. You see the car seems to be travelling quite slowly. It takes a long time to fill the frame. If you had a long piece of commentary, you'd opt for the telephoto lens to give you more time. Now with the wide angle lens, and although the car is travelling at exactly the same speed and from the same distance, it seems to travel much more quickly and is more dramatic. Here again, a mid shot with the telephoto lens, action looks slower and less dynamic. Same shot size, mid shot with a wide angle, and the action looks much more dramatic and faster. For an interview with an out of focus background, you need to shoot with a telephoto lens and you need lots of room to move away from your subject. The camera is quite close to the interviewee here because he's shooting with a wide angle lens. The picture has a much greater depth of field, that is, a lot of the picture is in focus. As you see, his hand stays in focus in front of him for quite a distance, and the background is in focus. Now by putting the camera a long way from the subject, and using the telephoto lens, you can throw the background out of focus. See, it's a much narrower depth of field. His hand goes out of focus quite quickly, and the background is totally out of focus. crossing the line. It's one of those principles that even the most experienced directors still get confused by. And it's important, first of all, to know why it matters if you cross the line. Basically, the viewer gets confused at home because people start walking in the wrong direction or looking in the wrong direction. So what is the line? Okay, the line exists between two things. It's either a train and a track and the direction it's going in, or two people looking at each other, the line is between them, or someone walking towards a car, the line exists between the person and the car. And as a director, you have to decide which side of the line, which 180 degree side you're going to film from. And once you've decided and you do your wide shot from this side, you have to do your mid shot and your close up from the same side because if you don't, it's very confusing for the viewer. So, filming two people chasing each other, the cameraman does a wide shot, two shot, and then a single shot of one of the runners from the same side of the line. You can see the white line we put on the floor to show where the imaginary line is between them. If for the close-up of the second runner, he crosses over the line and shoots from the other side, You'll see when edited, the second person looks like she's running in the opposite direction. What he should have done is stayed on the same side of the line to do the close-up of the second person. Similarly, with two people talking to each other, you can see here the white line we've drawn between them. Again, if the cameraman does a wide shot and close-up from this side of the line, but then crosses over the line for a close-up of the second subject, when edited, it looks like she's looking away from him and not towards him.
What the cameraman should have done is stayed on the same side for the close-up of the interviewer and not cross the line. She now looks like she's looking at him rather than away from him. Again here, filming a person looking at a map, it could be a letter. In the wide shot, his right shoulder is closest to the camera. If you shoot the close-up of the map over his left shoulder, then when you put it together, it doesn't look right. You need to shoot over his right shoulder for the close-up, and then it looks correct. Be aware, if you film a person leaving a room going from right to left, if you then film them entering the next room going in the opposite direction, going from left to right, it'll look confusing. You need to film the subject going in the same direction, right to left. So is there any way of actually crossing the line without it being confusing? Yes, there is. If you have a bridging shot, such as a really big close-up of something, so that you can't really tell where you're filming from, and then you have a wide shot establishing that now you're filming from this side, or if you actually shoot straight down the line, and again, the next shot is a wide shot establishing that you're filming from this side of the line, or if you actually have a tracking shot where you physically take the viewer with you and show them crossing the line and establishing that we're now filming from here, as in this example. The cameraman films tracking across the line and if you use this shot, you can now use the images filmed from the other side of the line.